Now David's son Solomon is given mixed reviews by the Deuteronomistic historian. He ascends to the throne through intrigue. As I said, there's really no indication of a divine choice or approval, but he's said to reign over a golden age. His kingdom is said to stretch from Egypt to the Euphrates. He made political alliances and economical, uh, economic alliances throughout the region. He would seal these alliances with marriages. He married a daughter of Pharaoh. He married the daughter of the king of Tyre in Phoenicia and so on. The text claims that he built a daunting military establishment. He put a wall around Jerusalem. There were fortified cities, Chatzor, Megiddo, Gezer. These were bases for his professional army. It's said that the army featured a very expensive chariot force. He also had accomplishments in the realms of industry and trade. He exploited Israel's natural position straddling the north-south trade routes and was able to bring great wealth to the state in that way. The daily supplies that were needed to maintain Solomon's very lavish court are detailed in 1 Kings, so it seems to have been an extraordinarily elaborate court. He developed a merchant fleet. He seemed to work closely with the Phoenicians and the Phoenician king Hiram in developing a merchant fleet and exploited trade routes through the Red Sea. All sorts of exotic products are listed as coming in to Jerusalem from Arabia and the African coast we have the famous story of the visit of the Queen of, of Sheba. This could possibly be the Sabean territory in South Arabia. And there may be some basis in fact, given these trade routes and how well-traveled they were at this time. And of course, he's known for his magnificent building operations. Many scholars assume that given this tremendous wealth, this would have been a time for the flowering, a flowering of the arts. And so it's often been maintained that this would have been the time for the early traditions, biblical traditions, the early traditions of the nation to be recorded, perhaps the J source. People date it to the 10th century, the time of Solomon. But we should be a little skeptical of this grand picture because archaeologists have found that Jerusalem was a small town. It was a very small town, really until the end of the 8th century. Suddenly it absorbed many refugees from the fall of the northern kingdom. Remember, Israel is going to be destroyed in 722, so refugees fleeing southward will greatly expand Jerusalem. We have our archaeological evidence of that. But there are very few material remains that attest to a fabulous empire on the scale that's suggested by the biblical text. Chatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer, the three places that are mentioned as fortified military bases, these have been excavated. They do show some great gateways and some large chambers, even some stables, but archaeologists differ radically over the dating of these lairs. Some date them to the time of Solomon, some see it as later. Most concur that Israel was probably at this time the most important power in its region. But still, it would have been small and relatively insignificant compared to, say, Egypt or Mesopotamia, some of the great civilizations at either end of the Fertile Crescent. But it would have been the most important state in that area and probably was able to have some dominance over some neighboring areas as well.